So there. guys, we are at the clock tower. I have actually never been up here before, even though I pass this thing like every single day growing up, I just never came up here. But we're coming up here now because the story is that this was like built as like a water, a water tank, like right after, right before the Civil War or something like that, some bullshit like that. I covered this on my channel a long time ago before I learned about Tartaria. And then when I learned about Tartaria, <laughs> I called bullshit on absolutely all history we've been taught because it's all fucking bullshit. So I am wondering if this is actually an obelisk that they're hiding. Is this an obelisk? So Stephanie's gonna pull some cards. I'm just walking around. That's a cute little house right there across the street. I'll come over here. Myrtle Hill, the cemetery where we were just pulling carts and dousing is right over there. All right, this is the downtown area. Okay. There's apparently a museum in here, but. Hello everybody, welcome to our divination on the clock tower in Rome, Georgia. I have covered the clock tower before, but of course this was long before I was introduced to Tartaria. Since discovering Tartaria, it's been enjoyable for me to go back and review some of these histories, some of our history here in America, and start to look at it a little bit deeper. As you guys know, I spent a good chunk of my childhood in Rome, Georgia. Rome is about an hour northwest of Atlanta, and it has three rivers that run through it. If you missed our episode on Myrtle Hill, where Stephanie and I dove into the history of Myrtle Hill, I will place that episode down in the description box below. Now, when I first started this channel, I did cover the clock tower. Because growing up, we always heard a curse that if you were born under the clock tower, you would die under the clock tower. I always felt quite lucky because no one in my family was actually born in Rome. And as I said in the Myrtle Hill episode, even though I have my grandparents buried there and my parents live there now, my family doesn't have any heritage in Rome. And as many people know, I did not have a very good time living in Rome. Rome was one of the last locations that Mr. T went to when he was doing his final um, celebrations, we'll call it, before the uh, competition of November 2020. And it is my suspicion, as well as what we got in the cards, that there was a reason for this. There's a lot of money in Rome. There's a lot of deep state action in Rome. And I believe that this town at one point was a town of great healing. We figured out that Myrtle Hill was potentially covering up an Isis temple, just like the Isis temple in Tennessee. We believe that the rivers of Rome were used as healing. And of course, once the Great Reset happened in the fall of Tartaria and the mud floods, the controllers took over. The controllers knew where potent pieces of land were and they utilized it. So before we get into the breakdown of the clock tower, I do want to put that forward. Now we're going to get into a brief history of what they tell us the clock tower is. According to what the controllers tell us, the clock tower is one of the oldest landmarks in Rome, Georgia. It is on top of a hill called Neely Hill, which is one of the seven hills of Rome. Nowadays, though, locals just call it Clock Tower Hill. According to the controllers, the clock tower was built in 1871 by a man named Mr. Noble and his family. The official story goes the clock tower was built to hold water for the town. Quite interesting seeing that the town is literally on three rivers. The clock tower itself is 41 feet tall and at the very tip top there are clocks. Now, if you are familiar with Tartaria and you understand a little bit about these buildings that might not be as new as they tell us they are, where we see a lot of these clocks weren't necessarily clocks for our ancestors, but rather gauges, ways to, to gauge elements like mercury and yes, of course, water. And the way that they, they used these, these structures to harvest free energy for the people of Tartaria. 
After supposed repairs done to the clock tower, it now is 104 feet tall. So it went from 41 feet to 104 feet. I call BS on that, but I wasn't there in the 1800s. But this is just my speculation from what I've been told. Now, of course, I said in the 1870s, this was when the clock tower was built to, again, supposedly service the town of Rome for water. However, the clock tower could not be used anymore to service water in 1890. So it's not like even it was even in use for that long. Now, according to the research, the clock tower did go into disrepair for a while. But according to the research, the Junior Service League of Rome, which my mother was a part of, actually put the funds in to regenerate the clock tower. From what I understand, there is actually a museum there now. I don't know. I've never been there. And from what Stephanie and I got from our divination, well, there's a totally different story as to what that clock tower actually was all right so we found a very shady spot to sit because you guys how hot is it outside stephanie i mean it's not any different in the summertime in connecticut but i mean it's um i lost a few pounds in water weight yeah See, only difference is our heat stays going down our heat just never leaves it just stays it just stays it just stays all right so i want to know is this an obelisk this clock tower is there anything underneath this clock tower? Yes. So yes to both. What is underneath this obelisk clock tower? <coughs> is there a pyramid underneath this? We know there are pyramids in Georgia that they're hiding. Gyro. Uh, okay. Gyro abduction? Can you specify? Can you clarify what that is? Spirit? What is that? What does it do? We don't know. We don't know what that is. In the shade, it feels nice, though. It does. Harnesses energy. Is the cabal using this? While using this, yep. There is um, a curse here in Rome. It's supposed a curse that says if you're born under the clock tower, you tower, you will die under the clock tower. Meaning people who are born here will absolutely be brought back here and die. Now, no one in my family was actually born here, so I feel I've always felt very removed from that curse because I was not <coughs> born under the clock tower. No one in my family was born under the clock tower. Is that curse correct? No. Who started that curse, that rumor of that curse? Cabal. Cabal. I feel like that's their way of saying they have maybe um, children born under the clock tower and they die under the clock tower after they're born. Do they do that here at the clock tower? Do yeah. They sacrifice Is that underneath? true? I could, I could see that. Yeah. Yeah, do they use foster children here too? Do they use foster children here? Yeah. Is Trump aware of this clock tower? Is Trump aware of this clock tower? What is around me? No, was that a bee? That was a bee. Okay. Um, yeah, he's aware of it. Was this clock tower originally an obelisk used for good in Egypt? Was yeah. this an, is this an, was this originally an ISIS temple? Was, was there originally an ISIS, an ISIS temple? temple underneath? Was this a temple for the good of any kind before the Cabal came? Whose temple? In 
interesting. Whose temple? Hathor. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it was Hathor's temple. I knew it. I just knew it. I think I'm going to cry right now. Yep. Can I have you pull from my, my light series deck? Sure. Can you ask why? Normally, guys, I know you don't normally share decks, but Stephanie and I, our energy is very, very mush together. So, um, can you ask why was it that my family moved here? Because I've, I've always held a grudge against my family for moving us here. Still at 39 years old, I have a lot of trauma around this. And I just, the one thing, if I could change anything about my childhood, I, we would have never moved to Rome. Somebody high up in the family collaborated um, to move. Let me, let me clarify this King of Swords. I mean, I know my grandfather moved here because he got headhunted by to be the head of surgery for the Harbin Clinic. But my parents left Rome because I don't have any heritage here. There's no heritage in this town for my family, either side of the family. And my parents actually went back to South Carolina and then my dad got brought back for her. I actually have a strange feeling it has something to do with your grandfather that was a mason. My great grandfather? -grandfather. My great grandfather didn't live here ever. I know, but I feel like something in this town has something to do with him because I'm getting the King of Swords with the King of Pentacles. That is a very powerful person. And I'm not getting a good energy around it because I feel like we have a co we have this collaborate. This is my coven card. Yeah. So I wonder if people in, I don't think your parents knew anything. I think it was, I don't know. I feel like it was more spiritual than anything. Can I ask? So my great grandfather, Joseph Bryce, my mom's dad's dad, the Bryce family is in a very, 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 very powerful family <laughs> in South Carolina. Very, extremely powerful, extremely wealthy family in South Carolina. Um, and Joseph Bryce died when my mother was a child, so I never knew him. But I share his birthday, February 4th. We have the same birthday. And my grandfather thought that was really cool that I shared his father's birthday. Now, Joseph Bryce was a 33rd degree master mason. I know this. I have all the paperwork. He died in good standing with the Mason Lodge of South Carolina that he was a part of. And I was born, and I was named my mother's maiden name for the Bryce family. Was I supposed to be a fucking sacrifice here? Is that why I... Sorry, guys, that was my finger in the camera there. Is that is that why we were brought here? Was I supposed to be sacrificed? I'm actually getting your energy had to shift the energy here. I'm not getting you were supposed to be a sacrifice. You had a past life here, and you had to settle here to um, bring it back to its natural state. I don't know if it worked, though. Not in this 3D. The quantum? I feel like I feel like it probably kept the frequency stable to some degree, you know, for those who are good, if that makes any sense at all. Um, I just can't get over. I mean, I, I mean, you saw me talk to my mom last night, the amount of literal... My life was horrific here. Nah, she's not getting it. My mom's like, but she yeah. saw it all. She saw everything. I think because vibrationally speaking, if you're vibrationally not <coughs> above a certain point, it's going to be over someone's head. Is my soul older than my parents' soul? Oh, yeah. I don't even have to pull cards on that one. <laughs> I always, I always felt older than my parents, like I was older oh, than yeah, them. Oh yeah, same with me. Um, does, do my parents just ignore, did, deep down, do my parents know the amount of absolute trauma that happened to me on a daily basis in this town? Do they understand that deep down, but don't maybe want to admit it, that they put me in that position? No, they don't know. 
because they quickly, they quickly, they might in their higher self, but I'm not getting in their lower self, and they quickly just like stand their ground to like stop. Can't, they can't accept it. I mean, my mother was trying to deflect all day yesterday about when I would bring up stuff that happened to me here. Yeah. It, there's, there, it's like waking up somebody to begin with. It's, um, plus there could be a, a sense of guilt too from her higher self. Maybe she doesn't want to admit it because there's a sense of guilt. Okay, so here's my question. All I want for my parents <coughs> to do, all I want from them is for them to apologize to me for allowing me to continually be abused and not doing anything to stop it. I mean, I feel like, okay, so knowing what I went through, if I were a parent and my child was going through what I went through here, I would have moved out of this town so fast. Yeah. I would have got my kid away from here. I don't think there's an understanding, though. That they actually, actually. I don't, I, like, I've, I got to witness how your mom reacted, and there is, um, there's still scales over her eyes with it. Yeah. I don't think she quite, because there's certain, like, we even see this in the truth or community where, People are awake, but they're not understanding the spiritual aspect of all this. Right. It's more political. Right. My mom's not just on the political side yeah, of things. Yeah, exactly. So I think, you know, once everything starts to come out, there'll be an acknowledgement to it and probably an apology. That's it. all I want from my parents. I just want them to apologize for... I don't the, think you're going to get that until she fully... I don't, I don't well, think she's Well, I'm not going to get it from my dad because my no. dad is completely gone. He's not in the picture anymore. No. But I, I would love, all I want is for an acknowledgement that, and my mother would say like, you know, she was saying, yes, I know, I know you, remember yesterday, like, I saw it, I know you were spiritually attacked. Yeah. But then it quickly would change where she just wouldn't apologize, just apologize for I putting your maybe, child through this. I think maybe in her head, you would have gotten attacked like that anywhere. It had nothing to do with being here. Well, and that is true to an extent. Yeah. But here it was worse. And I felt very, I think that's why I have a lot of, uh, I think that's actually, I know I've, I've talked a lot about my PTSD and my CPTSD and I always talk about my exes, but I do think, and I, and I had a dad that was not the nice, I mean, my dad, my dad lets his ex, his wife abuse my sister me openly, not spiritually, but just openly, he doesn't do shit about it. But, um, I mean, my dad left me to be raped once, let's just put it that way. Like, I was, we were talking about that with Stephanie last night, he just allowed it to happen, so... Um, my dad's just, I, I just, there's no hope for my dad. I think he's just, yeah, he's not ever going to, well, he's going to have to face that karma in his yeah. next lifetime. Yeah. So, but my mom, on the other hand, I just want her to acknowledge cause she gets up. The thing is that she gets upset that I never want to come here and it becomes an issue where I'm the bad guy because I don't want to come here, but I don't want to come here. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I, I would rather meet her at, in between like I don't I just don't want to be here because this town is awful it's awful here it's horrible here it gives me anxiety I get tired so talk about yesterday what were you experiencing oh I'm tired already like yeah so the energy is so thick and so dense you'll walk like in a certain area especially when we were on the college campus mm -hmm. and you feel like you're almost in a vortex like I almost collapsed like, I was so, I'm exhausted right now. I just woke up a few hours ago. Right. There's no reason I should be tired right now. On a normal day, I'm not tired at this time of day. But I'm like, I I have a headache. Yep. I feel oh, like I, crap. The child I struggled with constant migraines here. Yeah, it's it's dense. It's heavy. And no, it's not from the heat. The yeah. heat adds to it, but yeah. it's it's literally, I can feel it strongly. I would not want to grow up in this town. No, this is no. the I, 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 any person who brings their child here to grow up, I want to be like, that's child abuse. Get your kid out of this town. <coughs> Raise your kid in Rome, Georgia, in my opinion, is child abuse because this place is so toxic. It's so toxic. And and I'm I'm so you you see me in person. I'm a very lanky person. I'm a very She's active. She's tiny. I'm a very active. She itty bitty. <laughs> itty bitty. <laughs> my boobs aren't itty bitty, but <laughs> no, those well, yeah, she itty bitty. So I'm a very active person. I'm a very hyperactive person. I'm not a napper. I'm not, I don't, you know, I'm very. I'm the same way. 
But when I, I was here growing up, I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome because I would just be so drained of energy all the time. And it's because spirits were feeding off of me. It's because I was literally having the life force sucked out of me and nobody taught me how to do this. Nobody set, set, came up and said, this is what's happening to you. This is how we're gonna fix it. Instead, yeah. I was just left to deal with it. And, and I know that's not my parents' fault 100% because they had no idea. They don't, no. they're not. There's a total of, like, pe people are oblivious. It takes somebody who's ultra sensitive to this stuff to, to recognize it. Um, and actually, it's funny. I'd love to do an investigation in my hometown because I had similar, I mean, I was always tired, very historical, lots of historical landmarks in my hometown. And my hometown also is named after a European city of Berlin, Connecticut, Berlin. Yeah. So what the hell is that all about? You know, and it, it had a weird feel to it. It really did. Very similar almost to this. Yeah, there's something, especially in the East Coast, I feel like there's a lot of... So I'm gonna ask that, guys. Put down in the description or the comment section below. Now that take, Stephanie's taking a road trip to my neck of the woods, do you guys wanna see me take a road trip to her neck of the woods and do the same thing there? And also, would you guys like for us to plan a meet and greet at some point in some location, somewhere? where we can do a live show together with an audience. Let us know if you guys would be interested in that. Um, That'd be fun. So, anyway. All right, so I think we've answered some questions. This was a Hathor temp temple, which to me makes a lot of sense, um, knowing my backstory and my past lives as to why maybe I had to be here to balance the energy. I think you had to balance some feminine energy. I just heard that. Feminine energy, yeah. Just tied to my past lives, yeah. Probably, I mean, a lot of us older souls, we have past lives and our energy really balances out where we currently are, where we have been in, in, in life, so. All right. So guys, let me know if you ever felt that way in your hometown too, especially in the Americas, because we know that this was the actual um, creation belts. This was the actual Mesopotamia. This was the actual Egypt and Israel and Atlantis and all that good jazz. So anyway, all right.